Let's talk about uh, Paco first. So if you have been playing Mini World for around two years, like me, I start me were around a year ago and Paco was one of the first mini game type in mini world and back in the days there was a lot of different Paco maps and people all focus on playing Paco maps only and through, throughout those two years there have been a lot of change to the game and Paco maps also have updated themselves to be more futuristic, more modern, and more suitable with the current version of Mini World. Basically, Poku is an actual sport in the uh, real world that people can uh, can practice along with others and usually carry out in urban space. Although it can be done actually anywhere, and the Poku sport involves seeing all the seeing the environment in a new way, trying to imagine new potential that you can navigate your movement around and across or under different features of the environment. And so in Mini World it's kind of the same. So you will create a course or like a path for all the play players to try to navigate through it trying to find different ways to complete it in the fastest time possible. And there has been a lot of different types of Paco map actually. I have some good example of Paco maps right here that I can show you guys just in a minute. And we will start with like the oldest one, which is this, this one. So back in the days, this is how like Paco looks like, right? So back in the days we have like multiple levels Paco as you can see like in this map for example we have different rooms and each room will have one mini RP like this and player can travel around each level to reach to the next level Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> I start off with level 11. Oh, so this is how Paco works basically. But this is Paco from two years ago and yes that there, there's been a lot of change. Things get a lot harder and players also enjoy playing Paco more and in different ways as well. So basically, as you can see, these old Paco maps, they don't prevent you from using your, your pets. You can actually use your pet to cheat your way through. And I actually can also use my character ability here. Yes, so the, the issue with like old Paco maps right now is that they don't have like the setting to prevent players from using like their pets and their player ability to cheat out the cost so that's why we need like new Paco maps these are a bit outdated and so you guys will be the one who will create those new Paco maps for me world and for others to enjoy okay so sometimes you can also include other element to your Paco gameplay such as like fighting a button like this one it makes the game more interesting and have like a unique gameplay from others if you have play like a Paco maps that looks really colorful like this one yeah it's one of the new Paco maps style I believe it was the 20, 2019 Paco map style. Like all maps will include like colorful term like this one, and you have once you have only one path to go, like just like this one, and around will be different pixel art that you can include in your maps to make it more, bit more colorful. I guess it's 
it will have more things for the players to explore that actually make them want to go forward and see all of the like decoration that you put in and these type of map usually have a very like relaxing music you can enjoy like achieving some new parkour skill as well as just enjoy the view and the music in this map it's usually a very pleasant experience and as you can see in this map they actually give you a lot of stuff right here and I actually believe that some of them is not actually useful at all but like this one right here this one is like the essential items you need for building a parkour map so yeah just keep this one in mind the things about these like kind of not old but like these reverse parkour map is that they all look the same like people create more parkour maps like this but it's more like a copy and pass action where they just use the same the same decoration the same track over and over again so there has been nothing new in 2019 and that's when people start like trying out all the types of minigame and parkour is slightly going down from its popularity right so these are like the more challenging part and like i say i'm not really good at parkour so <laughs> we would just have to um, stop here maybe check out all the maps or i oh yeah i could just cheat through this actually hold on can i yeah i think i can so basically here's the thing these outdated parkour map doesn't prevent you from using your pets and your character ability character ability which you can now do that so i will show you how if you don't know how to do it yet so keep following the class and you will learn everything you need to know in order to create a good parkour map so here's the thing that i say is not necessary so if you have this item right here you can just swarm right by it. oh wait <laughs> i don't get it oh well or you can just jump in the lava but the things about placing lava in your parkour map is that it will actually make your map laggier if you haven't known that lava block is unstable and the more you place it like the more laggy your gameplay will your gameplay experience will become oh well i think that's another issue with these outdated parkour maps is that Sometimes you just stuck like this. You cannot really get back on the track. Okay, so that's two of the old parkour maps, and now we have some new one. Actually, let's start with this. Let's go through this one right here. This is a really creative one. As you know, parkour mean that people will just go through the environment and try to navigate themselves to complete like the course and it doesn't always have to be a straight line or doesn't always have to be a straight path that you can just see and go through so look at this map right here so the creator actually makes something new something very interesting it's a giant tree and as you can see there's no actual path right here and you actually can just explore around trying to find different ways to get to the top but yeah th the creator is very mindful he actually leave like these red blocks pattern over here to show you the like the correct ways that you can just go through and usually these unique type unique term map they have something very interesting Normally you don't you don't feel like you want to reach to the end because 
the old Paco maps all have the same things. You just reach the end and then you just win. There's nothing there. But these type of maps, you actually want to go to the top to see what is it at the top is waiting for you. Which makes it very interesting for player to actually want to explore the whole map and not just going through a part of it and then just go out. I myself actually want to complete this map, but as you can see, I don't have the skill, the parkour skill needed to actually complete the maps. So we will just check it out a little bit more and then I will show you some other good example of parkour maps these days. Wait, let me quickly check it if they actually apply the... Uh, nope, I can still use my head right here and I believe... Oh. Oh, so this map is still haven't prevent you from using your ability to cheat to another level. So that's so. Uh, anyway, so these these actually the only items you will be needing in your Paco maps. So you have this Ross Chicken to speed up your movement. This uh, tasty bread to uh, recover your your health point when you actually fall down this one is for both to increase your speed as well as recover your hush speed this one instead is to um, get you back to this point this one point uh, I don't know why he's only give us 6 because I'm pretty sure we need like a tons of this item for Paco maps anyone Anyway, the chicken is for uh, people who find uh, the course is a bit challenging. They can use the chicken to actually increase their speed and speed through the course. It doesn't... It's, it's, it's not cheating because it's actually an item that the creator put in. So right now, I'm actually going through quite a bit of the maps already. So that's that's a that's good thing. So you don't want to build your map like start up completely very hard or super challenging and people will just like they will quick from the start. You want to start easy and more challenging at the end. So right now I'm actually curious what will be waiting on top of this map. I have not completed a parkour map before. <laughs> so if any of you have played this map, you can just let me know what is at the end of the, at the top of this tree right here. And so, I think we should move on to the next example of good parkour maps these days. Okay. And so this one right here, this one's actually really good as how you can see your items right here so in a parkour map i believe that you will need a tons of these items not just six or ten you need a lot of these and we have um how to play, how to play i think Let's put that here and all right so oh this one also have a um, dev shop as you can see, this is quite good actually. This is actually the things that you will set up for your dev shop as a parkour map. This is quite good. Okay, so um, let's first take a look at this map right here. So this one doesn't have like a straight path. It's actually go around and just go up to the top. It looks very interesting though. And that's a lot of level right there. And is it also have these? Oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention that some parkour map doesn't give you this, like state one, state two, like step one, step two, step three, that you actually can keep track of how far you have gone in the maps. So that's actually a good thing that that you should include in your map if you are going to participate in the event building event right so 
This one start up really easy though. You see, like I said, you doesn't need to you, you don't need to actually put lava all over this map right here because you actually have this item. And you can always use it to go back to the swamp point. And <laughs> I can't even complete this easy course. Oh my god. Here we go. So right here I will just see if this map actually Ah, you see this one is like a, this one actually a modern Poco map and the creator actually set the rules to you cannot use your pet in this map particularly. And yes, I can't use my character ability neither. And as you can see, as we go up more, there's actually more challenge like obstacle up there and there's no way I can complete this one but we will just go through some of the steps to see if there's anything oh yeah this is also one of the thing you can include in your parkour maps if you have the developer rank in video work. I cannot read it this um, side right here but I do know that this is like if you watch an ad you can skip a level so this is actually great like if some player found themselves stuck at what a particular level like this one like they cannot get through it they can just watch an ad and they will automatically skip to the next level the maps have a very unique term to it they use the Mario term to make a parkour map, which I really encourage you to like do something like this. Like don't just create a pa a parkour like course and call it a parkour map. You need to put something unique into the map, something original and something that makes the map stand out from all the parkour maps. Because, like I say, parkour was one of the earliest, like mini game types in mini worlds. So, after years of developing, there have been hundreds, no, maybe thousands of parkour maps that actually looks the same, and people will not enjoy playing the same map over and over again. They want to see something very new, something refreshing. And if you can make things like this to put in your parkour maps, I don't see why people will not try and play it because this is actually awesome. And that's, the more I go, you will see like the course will change. He doesn't, the creator of this map doesn't like keep the same pace of the whole maps. You will see like. Now we are heading straight to the castle. The view is great, decoration is great. You know, this guy doesn't use like pixel art, like random pixel art. He actually focus on the Mario Mario theme to build his whole maps. As you can see, now we're heading to the castle. And this is just very interesting. How to start building parkour maps. To make it easy for you guys i will start a new one and show you what you should do at this step you will click on creation click on dev mode so for parkour map you actually want to do a, a flat terrain and mostly you will choose grassland because why not and you should also turn up animals and monsters don't forget to do that because these guys right here will make your maps a lot blackier running around so make sure you do that and enter your map name you should leave this as unlimited because that way you can expand your parkour maps like you can add in more levels if you want to later on and just click start so there is how you create a parkour map this is how all parkour maps start you don't actually need um, a waiting room you don't 
necessarily need a waiting room like in other types of minigame. In Poku maps, you only need like a standing platform, a starting platform like this. And you, as you can see, right here, I'm using just a square, but you can go very creative with the standing starting platform. You can build your own face, you can build like, your own logos, anything you can come up with can be turned into a standing platform or a starting platform. I'm actually trying to build Mickey Mouse right now, but it doesn't seem like it works out. Anyway, you get the point, right? You can go very creative with this platform. Don't just stick with like this simple design because like mostly all the maps like have those already, so don't stick to it. Also, these jumping bars, that is what I call them, but you can also change these to different kind of shape like for example you can do square like this you can do like a ticker shape like this one you can do a single dot or just two blocks like this one yes you can also do like creative shape like uh, pixel art but make sure like it's not too big and make sure that people can actually jump on it okay so at the starting platform, what you need to have is this. I believe you also need this at the start. Oh wait, you actually need to uh, prepare the uh, this one first. Yes, you need to create this one first. This is the, oh yeah, this is Swamp Boy, hold on. Three Swamps Boy, ah yes my bad ah yes so my mistake hold on so you need this one at the start of your Pokemon. so players will appear right here from the beginning right from the start of the course see so that is the uh, public initial swap point initial swap point so you will find it here in edit and it will be right here you can also place this is is like um, where players will appear before you click on start the game but it doesn't necessarily need it so yeah and then you will need these two just right here you usually only need the red one the red one is when player enter your mouse what will they have in their inventory so you mostly you will put the uh, roast chicken where is it <laughs> you will put the tasty bread in there you put some uh, roast chicken but ah there is so if you are new to mini war and you are using a laptop let's say a laptop and you want to click on it quickly to get to the maximum amount you can put in the chest you should hold down the shift button and then click on it you see that's how you actually make things faster so there we go and now you just click shift again and shift again there we go and for the blue chest the blue chest is for player who reswam after they die and you can put anything in here to be honest but you don't like I said some unnecessary items so actually you don't need this but it's, it's a choice that you can have in your Pokemon. If you want player to have more items when they die, then you just put them in here. As for like the, the most important items you need for Pokemon maps, you will not find the Reswam score anywhere here. So 
you need to go to here you go to um i believe you go to um this i'm not sure <laughs> give me a minute you go here go pack yes there it is so you need to use this for the um for Poco map you need a lot of this and the way how you will actually get this is you need to collect it first of course by just playing the game you will get a lot of this like I have 276 transfer score right now and if I remember correctly you extract them can you actually let me change the play mode I will go to uh, my pack again extract them ah I see how you can do it now so um, you need to um, yeah you need to do <laughs> some type of switching game mode tricks here to actually make it to work I believe this is how you do it I'm not entirely sure this is your play mode so you can only claim this in play mode and after that I guess just put it in a chest change it back hopefully it will be in here oh my god great that's just great what happen if you extract them in the creation oh you can what's <laughs> I swear I remember that back in the days you cannot do this in creation mode but I guess now that you can you can just do that and you can just fill this up with all this transfer score make sure you have a lot of them in here because like player will will need a lot of them because they will fail a lot okay moving on to the next thing you need this this I like I said is to indeed identify what state or what step they are on so they can feel like they can have a bit like achievement feeling like after they complete each state you can either use the use this for or you can use the uh, the square one right here it depends on how you decorate your your platform you can put this anywhere but make sure like the player will see it this is not like actually good because it's a bit small what you can actually do if you you can uh, you can use the square one the square one is a lot bigger but the square one can only display one letter at a time so you actually don't have to do it like this so s1 means state one or step one and this is much easier for player to see and like i say you can actually put it anywhere you want depend on your poco maps term depend on your platform depend on your decoration you put as long as the player can see it so that's how it works and now we can start going through building a Poco course so as you can see here this is a one block jump it's like step and it's super easy like anyone can jump like this right so next is step two we have oh yeah Make sure that you put this, this, no, not this. You put the individual, individual is one point. Every time you build a new starting platform up a state. So after finishing a step, the player will need to click on this to actually go back to this step if they fail. If you don't include this in your maps, then the player will go all the way back to the start, and that is really annoying. They won't 
you won't have the urge to go through your maps anymore if that happened for sure so next we will just go uh, through this second step right here after we place this make sure the players can see it they can click on it and then this step is two blocks Paco state Paco step the Paco bars this is also like the average difficulty difficulty of uh, Paco maps you have this land right here two blocks and you can still easily jump to it like jump through the, the step without any difficulty so step 3 is 3 blocks so this is actually a bit different in um, each uh, for each um, mini world communities I believe that in the global communities three blocks is actually hard like people in the global community consider three blocks is a hard track but for players in the Vietnam communities three blocks is actually the uh, average length that uh, you should be able to jump through in the uh, in the parkour maps anyway I might be wrong but I I played some English Paco maps before and this is the hardest so this is the hardest land that they have three blocks all right so yes we do have four blocks over here which is possible for players to jump through but they will need to have a like a bit of running yeah like that this is four blocks yes four blocks so they will need like a really speed up run and jump to get through that but keep in mind is four blocks is still possible for a single jump without any like skill any speed buff or bounce of the wands anything like that and so you can't just combine all of that together to make like a really chaos like track like this one one four two three one two it's actually a lot harder for players to go through this track because when you're going fast like this you just want to keep going at the same pace you don't want to change your your speed or your jumping height anything like that so if you make a track like this they definitely will have to slow down and go through each of the bars like this so make sure you make the track more like you make a variety of different tracks and make sure you mix them together to create new challenge for the players ah right here I have a uh, example of how you can include not a single track but like two different track with two different difficulty for the players to choose like this one is say hard and this one is say easy the reason why is that this one have the length of two blocks this one have the length of like three yeah three blocks so the players actually can choose which path they want to go depend on how good they are at Paco and Mini World. You don't have to always have two tracks or one track. You can also have like three or four like this one. You can have another track right here. This one is four, four blocks away. So you can call this one is hard and this one is normal. You get the point, right? You can go with different difficulty tracks so that if they cannot do the hard track they can always choose like other difficulty that suit them the most right so moving on to this step right here what I want to show you is sometimes you want to uh, block the players from 
cheating their way through the maps. Like, if I don't put this here, the player can just like somehow speed this and jump through here. Yes, I have Cindy on, but yes, it sometimes happens that player will try to find a way to cheat their way through your parkour course. So what you can do it is that you can use um, either this block right here or this block right here. So you just place the block as a wall like this. And if you are new to Mini World, these are called the invisible blocks that they will just disappear when you switch to play mode. Yes, just like that. And so the player cannot cheat their way through the course and also they cannot break these blocks. They are just unbreakable. And what is the differences between the white one and blue one is that if you use the blue one, then projects like projects are like um, if you throw something it will actually go through but if you place the white one nothing will go through so the only difference is, is the blue one will let items pass through it right all right so usually you just want to use the white one because you don't throw anything in the parkour map actually so one of the things you can do is that if you have a lot of these invisible blocks in your parkour maps, it will actually make the, the maps actually heavier in terms of the, the, hmm, the amount of information that player needs to download. But also it will make your map laggier at some point. So what you want to do is you want to uh, make the walls like this. You can just skip one line and place one line and skip one and place one. Because this bait right here is still impossible for any players to get through. So you can actually shorten the the ones of your parkour maps by these tips to this side this is what you can always do when you feel like your parkour map is simple like you always have a straight line like this so you want to make it a bit different you can always turn it right or left or you can even like put it up like this you can go all the way up and then just turn around whichever way you like make it as like original as you can like you won't you don't want others to copy your creation so trying to put a little effort into making it your own the tools you need to build this these type of tracks if you on your laptop pc you just need to click j and it will bring you to this tab right here which is all of the setting you need for your maps but if you are on uh, a phone, let's say a phone you will need to um, click on this and go to the basics tab right here these trigger and strip is a bit more advanced and yes you can learn about trigger in later mini learning camp class so stay around for those so today we'll go through the go through the setting of this Paco maps so I so far I have keep everything the same so as to show to you guys how to actually set up the setting for Paco map from start to finish the only thing I did was I click this on why because when you are building a map you you don't want to um, get lost when the sky turns dark in the game so what i recommend you to do is set the time to 8 a.m because that is when the the lighting in the game is actually the best and you turn on fixed timer so the game will lock the time to 8 a.m and you can always build your map without any like day and night interruption this is also another thing you should 
turn it to sunny instead of sunny and rain because sometimes raining isn't the ideal weather to build a map so yeah make sure you do that if you complete your parkour maps and you actually want it to be raining all the time so you click on this it's that easy right next is the uh, generate monster tab so if you follow me from the start of the creating the map step you don't need to uh, bother about this because we don't have any monster in game if you do have monster in game you should just turn this off because for parkour maps you don't want to have a lot of uh, creature running around that would be quite confusing for players to just go around and see different types of animals in the parkour maps right for gravity this is very important to be honest with you this is the essential element to a parkour map right here so the more the normal gravity of a, a map like every map is 1.0 and if you set to this to 8 0 0.8 you will see that here you see that there is not a lot of difference this is 0 0.8 and if i switch it back to um 1.0 you see this not really a lot of difference but for a lot of players who play parkour a lot they will know these little differences in the setting so you actually want to always keep your gravity to 1.0 for parkour maps if you want to make it a little bit more easy for player you should do 0 0.8 or 0 0.6 just not like 0 0.4 that is too low or if you want to raise the difficulty i guess you can go to 1.2 it's just a slight difference but some player who play poker a lot they will not take it there so keep it at 1.0 is what i recommend so now for this one this foil falling damage switch so this is actually a new function that is very good for Poco maps before this function came out whenever you fall down from a really high place you lose your hp and you die let's see if i actually can yes you lose your hp and sometimes you die for parkour maps, like I said, if you um, jump from a very high place and you lose your HP, you will get um, like sometimes they give you bread and you can just recover your HP. But for new parkour maps, you don't even need to include like food in the game. You can just turn this, turn this off. Yes, turn this off and that's that will prevent you from losing hp from falling no matter how high you fell down your hp will stay the same so that is one thing and that is actually very good for parkour you jump and sometimes you jump down from a high place turning this off means that your hp will always stay the same you actually still need food because uh, as you know in mini world your hungry bar will go down through time and if your hungry bar reach zero your hp will start decreasing but like as i say you don't need as much food like you do before because now you don't lose your hp when you jump down from high place so make sure you turn this off machinery nope you don't need to bother about this because for parkour maps you don't actually 
use machinery a lot and you don't actually damage machinery so just in case you should turn this off right so for map rules for map rules you will see we have a start introduction yes this is a new function of mini war as well so by turning this on you will have this screen right here you will click on it you can add in a pictures of any corner of your maps you want to showcase to the player and then you can um, add in some information about your game like you should uh, do this you should do that to complete the map so you turn this on before you add both these and then to confirm the maximum page you can do is four and I recommend you do all four of them just showcase some of the the best view in your Poco maps for the players to see and so they can so they know what they are going for and they will feel like more achieve, achieving when doing that so host open you can leave this at it is Joy game in process make sure you always have this on because for Poco maps it doesn't matter if people join you during your game because they will always swarm at the starting point so just keep it this on so like others can join you while you are playing parkour counting you can keep this as three because all of the maps in me was always have this as three if you raise this to like let's say you raise this to 30 this means that after you click start game you have a waiting time of 30 seconds before you start the game so just keep it at 3 or 5 it depends on you ah this is another like important element of setting in Poco Maps. so you will need to make sure that you have the right music for the players to enjoy your map so let's say you have a very scary term Poco Maps like Halloween Poco Maps you will need to pick a type of music that actually sounds scary so I'm not sure which one of these is the scary one but I'm pretty sure there was one so you can just click on them see which one it, it is um, and then you just um, leave the music as you please so this one is speed up for is I guess this one is for raising and if you have like a speedrun Poco map you can put this music in usually I use um, the fight BGM because um, I create a lot of like PvP minigame so this is for PvP map definitely don't want to put this in the Poco map so anyway, just pick the one that you feel like it is suitable for your Poco map. Minimum players. Yes, just keep this as one. This is the number of players you need to actually start the map. So for Poco, you want that player can just challenge themselves in the maps alone. So just keep it as one. So for the game target, Let's see, we usually don't have time limit for Poco maps because people just want to actually complete the whole course and they might fall a lot, they might take a lot of time so you should not actually put the limit time on but if you are creating a um, speedrun Poco map on purpose then just turn it on and pick the time that you feel like is most reasonable for the player to complete your maps so the numbers here is in minutes so 30 min 30 minutes 15 minutes or 5 minutes is all on you
and then the scoring setting this is also used for when the player reach the end and you want to actually for the game to actually process to the winning screen you actually use this one so you want to turn this off because you don't want people to kill each other for getting points you want to turn this to zero on so this one is calling by collecting start you should have this as one why because um, you should uh, have at least one star at the end of the course for player to collect and the first person to collect it is the winner and you will find the start right here in the edit tab go to this this shiny start and you just place it at the very end of your course of your parkour maps so you can put all the things at the end but make sure you have this one little start and so when the players reach this destination you can just collect the star and as you can see he got one point and what that one point do well you need to turn this on turn the reach score to win on and you set this to one this means that if the player collect the star they will automatically win the game make sure you have all of the others setting to score to zero and only leave the score for collecting start on another things you can do is that you can raise this to any amount you want between 0 and 99 why because you can actually place stars along the like along the track like each step you can just put a star and that way the player need to collect all the star to actually complete your parkour course so that is another thing you can do this is another way of winning you can challenge your players to so down here in the reset after existing the game you want to turn it on because normally for poco maps you don't leave the game and come back to where you are you want to complete the course and then leave it let's say your maps have like a tons of levels and you want the players to actually be able to continue the game like if they reach level 30 they can leave the game and go back and start with level 30 then you just turn this off and then they will just go in as level 30 but normally you don't want that you want the player to actually try to complete your whole maps in one go because that is actually the thrilling of parkour is the achievement the player will get will feel like they achieve something really really good reach when uh reset when rich target score no because this if you turn oh is this turn on i don't know but if you set this on then if the player win the game will start again without showing the winning stream so you don't want that you want the player to have the feeling of victory they feel like they complete something very good so just I think it just leave it there as one polluted area setting so we don't need it this at all for Poku maps but I will just quickly tell you what this is if you turn this on then your game will turn to a battle royale type of game like PUBG or Free Fire you will have like a damage zone that will slowly string it weight in the middle of the maps so this is where you set that you can set the aerial 
like y and you can set the time it was string so this is actually for another type of map building so just so you know for Poco maps absolutely no so moving on to the team setting here for a Poco maps like any general Paco maps, you don't need to divide the player into different teams because there's no point in doing that. In Paco maps, each player will be their own team and they will try to complete the course by themselves. So just, I think just leave it by the no team. And if you want to do something advanced, you can always click on the edit button right here. And what this does is you can set a lot of elements to the players in this setting. For example, you can set max player in the maps. I recommend always put it at uh, as a 40 because although you don't usually have 40 people in a Poco mass, but you also don't want to limit the amount of players that a maps can hold because who knows sometimes maybe some famous youtuber want to play your maps and they want to get all of their fans in the map so the maximum amount of players mini world allow in a single maps is 40 people so you want to keep that in case your maps actually need it and for the permission setting you can all turn this on and you can go through all of these like movable can be injured pick up items all of these you can check if you want to allow the players to do something or prevent them from doing something you can always do that but for Poco maps I don't think you need to fix anything in this section at all just leave it off initial attribute like oh so you can set the player HP hunger point actually you can you can actually raise the player's hunger point to uh, the maximum of 2000 so what this does is now the player will have more hunger points and they can actually run and they can parkour for a longer amount of time without getting hungry and lose HP during playing your map so I I don't say that you must do this but I think this is a should do thing yeah attack no defend no moving speed no because if you change this moving speed then the player will actually feel really weird playing your maps actually if it's parkour it will make it extra hard for the player to get used to the new speed you set for them because all of the most of the maps like almost all the maps in mini world right now doesn't change the original speed of a player so they are used to that speed so don't 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 try and just challenge up your gameplay just keep it as it is for initial items so this one is really this one is interesting so this one if you turn it on as you can see you have items in the shortcut bar and you have items in back and when you click edit you can actually add items to this to these um, square right here and when the players enter your games they will actually get these items and the way you put them in like if you put something in this square they will get exactly this item the amount of the item in this spot you definitely have realized by now that this function actually works just like the um, the chest I mentioned earlier yes we will go back to that right now so as you can see we have this red chest right here it say the straw 
No, this one is the storage box. You have this red chest right here. The initial item chest. So these, this chest and the function I just show you here, they actually do the same things. But the thing about the chest is that there sometimes is there's sometimes like issue there's issue around it and to be honest I recommend you use this instead of the uh, the chest because this so far I try it and there's no issue when using it it's very convenient you can put whatever you want in any order you want and you can even set items in the player packs this is for their items on their shortcut bar which is the bar right down here and this is their item in their back one thing i would wait where is oh hold on there we go so one thing i would say is that you cannot get the transfer score in this setting I don't know if there's a way you can do that so if you want to put transfer score for players to use like this one you can only do it by placing the initial item chest but hey there's other ways you can bring players back to the reswamp point without the transfer score which I will show you more when we reach the trigger like trigger parts of this class and so moving on to the uh, so that's that's actually all of the uh, map rule setting wait let me check initial appearance oh you can also try it and use this because if you have a unique term parkour maps like Mario, you can actually turn the players who plays your map into like creative and weird character. You just need to turn this on. You click on Moto, and you just pick whatever you want the player to look like when joining your map. Let's say I have this Moto right here. Yes, if you want something other than the in-game character and animals you have to build it yourself but at the same time i believe that you can also get some of this uh, some of these model on the model library and so if you pick something like this this is what i have right now this is what i built from a year ago and if you click on you confirm then when player enter your map they will actually turn to that character that you have set for them see oh wait <laughs> i have one point so i won let's go in again and look at it more properly there we go you see so let's say you have a tom and jerry parkour mask then my idea for you is that you should make a course that like the player will turn into the the tomcat and they were trying to go through the course and chase out the cherry mouse this is a very nice idea and i don't think like there is already a map for that topic so yeah you can go ahead and make one if you want to so here you can see even when i turn into a character like this the items i'm holding is still show up on the screen so that's great Oh yeah, the size of the character actually will be will be changeable depends on the models you make. So make sure you make the character with the same size as the mini world skin or like original characters. So let's go back into the setting and see what else we haven't talked about. So down here, team aside because we have only one team so yeah you don't need to bother about this yet go to player setting you will see all of these permission for the player to do and to be honest you will only focus on i think one 
note 2 actually you sh you should turn this off what this does is this will prevent the player to actually break the blocks in your maps in portal maps yes you don't want the player to actually ruin the course you only want them to navigate themselves through the course so turn this off and the player will not be able to break anything in your maps and so you should also turn this off because you don't want they to, them to actually cheat to any step by doing double jump and other than that I think oh yeah this one this one is what I have been saying from the start of the class you should always turn this off in a Poco maps what this does is this will prevent the player to summon pets and just cheat to each like multiple step by writing something like I did as you can see if you have some of them, the mounts or the pets here like this one Kirin you can actually go through a lot of step with this pets only see so if you turn the setting that I just show you off then it will prevent the player to actually use any pets or mount so turn this off character skill like I said each character in mini world does have a skill they can apply in play mode and one of which is Cindy as she can jump higher than normal character and she can even do double jumps so Make sure you turn this off. This will make the gameplay fair to everyone. These two will make the gameplay of a Pokemon map fair for everyone. So make sure you remember to turn them off. A short mode for a Pokemon maps, you don't want people to fight each other. Just imagine you enter a Pokemon maps and somebody start running at you and hitting you start giving you some damage and then you lose HP and you die right away that won't be a, the best experience for Poco maps. so you want to click on the attack restricted choice here so this will prevent all the players who join your map to hit each other and so you can have a very friendly Poco gameplay without anyone trying to mess with anyone else. And for the swamp setting, this is for when the player dies of course. And to be honest, you don't need to worry about that because you already have placed this item. This is the reswarm point that you click on when you reach it and then you after you die you will appear right here. So you don't need to actually set anything. Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on, there we go. You don't need to actually do anything here. You need you can do this revive protection and the revive interval ah yes the revive interval means the, the revise time it will take after you die so right now it's zero which means after the player die they will right away appear at the respawn point if you set to uh, like for example three it will take like three seconds for the player to transfer back to the respawn point and the revival protection is the shield like it's like how long you will be invincible after you revive and for parkour you don't really need to um, have this at all so I say set it to one because there's no point raising it at all this is not necessary this is this is when you die in a game and you want the players to keep all them items or lose all them all the items they have 
or even drop a chest with all the items they have in it. So for Poco, as you saw the uh, example of Poco maps earlier, when I try to uh, reswarm or when I die, I don't actually lose any of my items. So you have the setting on keep items for Poco maps. Always use keep items. For number of lives, you can turn on this on to um, make the game more challenging like each player only have a certain amount of life to complete the parkour course but at the same time if you build a really long parkour map and you actually want players to get to the end then i say don't turn this on at all because they will try over and over again to get to the end with no life limit and that will be much more fun to do display setting map display we will do um, only one team so this is not accessory name display should be always visible visible to all because then the player will know who they are seeing in front of them or like behind them cross Cross, cross hair, cross. I think this is a cross, cross icon for shooting maps and stuff. Actually, you don't need this, but because in survival mode you do have this, so it is like something that the player used to have. So if you turn this off, this can lead to a very weird experience for the players so just keep it score and time you don't need it at all for a parkour map because you only have that one start to win in the final steps so might as well turn this off unless you have a time limit like a speedrun parkour map then leave this on enable battle tips this is not necessary but for those of you who don't know if you have a shooting maps gunfight map or pvp maps you should always turn this on what this does is it will appear on the chat box whenever a player kills another player it will have a really intense notification for that and the more you kill it will say double kill triple kill god line things like that so for pvp games yes always have this on but for parkour maps you don't even need it so even if you leave this on there's, there will be no one killing another player so it won't be a problem at all leave this off but it doesn't matter version setting this is like um, the view of the players you can set it to uh, the first person view or the third person view i personally think you should you should use the default camera for parkour maps but always turn the camera locking up so the player will have the choice to pick whatever view that suit them best for parkour if you turn that option on then the view is locked and your players will always have to use the same view for all of the step you place out for them having like a choice to uh, choose which type of view they can use is always a very good experience so should have that off Right, finally for this layer at tribu, like I said, it doesn't matter, but you can raise the hunger point. Like I said, it will prevent the player from being hungry, being hungry for a short amount of time and lose the HP really fast. Initial item, just like before in the team setting, you can put items in here and the player will get it when the game starts initial appearance is the same 
as the like the team setting before. Experience mode, nope. You won't need this for Poco Maps, so yeah, we will not go through this as well. So that is basically all the setting you need for Poco Maps. So actually, if you click on the recommend setting, there will be a section for Poco recommendation. So what this does is it, if you click on this, they will automate automatically turn all the setting to the most suitable for a Poco map. But if you want to go to each of them manually, especially this part, then you can just follow what I just show you. Okay, so that is the end of the class. 